，访谈图灵奖得主，结果遇到自己研究领域的开山鼻祖，是种怎样的体验？访谈图灵奖得主，结果遇到自己研究领域的开山鼻祖，是种怎样的体验啊？一个字，紧张。图灵奖呢是计算机领域的最高奖项啊，被誉为计算机界的诺贝尔奖。今天这期视频厉害了啊！虽然我离获得图灵奖还有那么一点点距离啊，但是呢，我非常有幸采访到了图灵奖得主约瑟夫·斯法基斯教授，非常感谢今日头条和中信出版社的邀请。斯法基斯教授呢是二零零七年的图灵奖得主，也是法国科学院院士、美国国家工程院院士、中国科学院外籍院士。他获得通灵奖的研究呢，是模型检查 （model checking）。那这个理论有多牛呢？啊，这么说吧，现在几乎所有的自动化、形式化的这种软硬件验证啊，都是基于这个理论。包括我自己啊，做了很多年的芯片验证的研究，那么很多其实都用到的是模型检查的方法，相当于这次遇到我们领域的开山鼻祖和祖师爷了啊，那是相当的激动。不过啊，斯巴基斯教授其实对于人工智能和大模型也有很多深入的思考。他写了一本书，叫做《这个理解和改变世界》。我这几天一直在。看啊，启发很大。这个呢，其实也是我们今天对谈的重点。话不多说，接下来就是我和斯法基斯教授的对谈。There's a couple of questions that I can we would like to discuss, and and、uh, most of them is related to the very hot topic recently, which is、uh, artificial intelligence and AI. Um, because I see there's a large、uh, portion of your book is talking about the difference between. Uh, human intelligence and、uh, and AI.、Um, and you mentioned about the difference and、uh, similarities between both. Would you would you be able to、uh, clarify a bit more, like about the comparison between human intelligence and artificial intelligence, please? Yes,、uh, I think、uh, there is currently a lot of confusion about what intelligence is and how it can be achieved. And、uh, without a clear idea of what intelligence is, of course, we cannot、uh, develop a theory of how it works. So we should agree on that.、Uh, yeah. If you open a dictionary, say the Oxford Dictionary,、uh, you will see that intelligence is defined as the ability to learn, understand, and think logically about the world, and the ability to do things well. So, of course, machines can do impressive things. They can outperform humans in games and are capable of performing a wide range of tasks,、uh, including some、uh, that are obviously sensory sensitive, like、uh, ChatGPT.、Uh, however, machines cannot outperform humans when it comes to situational awareness, to understanding the world, adapting to changes in their environment, and the creative thinking. I believe that today. Uh, we have weak, what we call weak artificial intelligence, that gives us the elements to build intelligent systems, but we do not have the principles and techniques to synthesize them and build the complex intelligent systems as we build the bridges、uh, from building blocks. So we cannot、uh, build the intelligent systems uh, that are uh, uh, can replace reliably humans in various tasks. And I believe that the road to artificial, what we call artificial general intelligence, passes through an important milestone that is autonomous systems. And personally, I work on autonomous systems. I've been working for years.、Uh, I, I could say a lot about autonomous systems. These are very different from.、Uh, these are、uh, reactive systems. They have to manage dynamically many different goals. They must cope with the uncertainty of complex、uh, environments. They must collaborate harmoniously with human agents, and、uh, this is not achievable today by using, say, LLMs. LLMs cannot drive cars,、uh, cannot organize production, is smart factories, and things like that. So we're quite far from uh, uh, achieving artificial general intelligence. 
I think one of the major uh, disadvantages or limitations of current AI is like they still require human, you know, guidance or something. Even though like LLMs seems to have some sort of intelligence, but it's still based on human, you know, guidance or um, supervision, isn't it? Yes, it's clear. I mean, and also they 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 can form all they they can perform only specialized tasks. Okay, and human intelligence is has the is multifaceted it has many different facets okay it's a combination of skills and uh, so uh, machines should be able to perform the tasks that humans can perform but also what is important is that humans can coordinate can make choices okay uh, mm -hmm. by managing many different goals so we are quite far yes okay because i see from your your book like you mentioned it's very for me, it's kind of a very controversial like an idea because uh, you mentioned the human can't uh, understand you know many complex things like together. Uh, you mentioned about like human can at a time can process about five things, um, the connections between those. So um, for human beings, it's a bit of a difficult to understand very complex behaviors. Uh, but you also mentioned it's very lucky for human because the 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 uh, classical physics or mathematics, you know, formulas or theor theories is very simple. And that's why human can understand that, right? So, um, but in that sense, do you think it's an advantage of human intelligence or disadvantage of uh, of human AI or human uh, intelligence? Well, the human human intelligence is the result of a historical evolution. Okay, and and uh, so. Uh, it 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 tries to uh, meet the needs we have when we uh, behave in interaction with the physical environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that machines uh, have exhibit a different kind of intelligence. Can have a, a limited memory. Okay. Can uh, make very precise computation. And human intelligence is not good at that. Okay. This is clear. And, and uh, here I would like to, to, to mention the Turing test uh, because uh, there is a lot of discussion about that, how we compare human and machine intelligence. Yes. And uh, let me remind that the Turing test uh, that was proposed by the founder of computer science, who is Alan Turing, is designed to compare a machine and a human that receive questions from an experimenter. So we have an experimenter, you have a machine and human in different rooms, the experimenter sends questions, and then the experimenter compares the answers. So these are uh, written questions. And Turing said that if the experimenter cannot distinguish which is the computer and which is the person, then, then the two are equally equivalent. Uh, why I mention in this test? Because there is currently a lot of discussion. People claim that their system is intelligent because it passed the Turing test, okay? And I think that the Turing test is uh, by no means adequate uh, uh, to, 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 to compare human and machine intelligence. Why? Okay. Because the judgment is, is human, is uh, subjective. And also the choice of test cases, of course, can be questions, can um, be biased to favor other machines uh, or, or the human. Mm -hmm. And also it's clear that the test in intelligence cannot be a question answer game, cannot be a conversation because human Intelligence is expressed by interaction with the environment. We speak, we move, we have a social behavior. So uh, it, it's clear that we need some criterion to agree what, how, how we can characterize human intelligence. Mm -hmm. And this is something also I discuss in, 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 in my book. Uh, in, in, we have proposed uh, what we call a replacement test. So the idea of the replacement test is a generalization of the Turing test. You would say that an agent A can be a machine or a human is as intelligent as a human B that performs a, a given task if A can, can replace successfully B. So I would say that a machine is as intelligent as a human driver if it can successfully replace the driver. So in some cases, the machines will prove to be more intelligent than humans or humans and machines. So so this is, this is very important to understand that uh, intelligence, there is no a unique concept of intelligence. There are many intelligences, okay? And uh, each characterizes the ability to perform tasks. So if, when people say that uh, uh, this system or, or my machine is smarter than a human, 
this is not meaningful because they have to specify for which kind of tasks. So clearly, for instance, LLMs are very good at summarizing text, and this cannot cannot be done by humans. Okay, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but there are other differences also, and and uh, so it's very important that we agree on on a concept of intelligence. Of course, if by saying intelligence we mean human intelligence, mm -hmm. this should be the reference. Okay, and and uh, it, the humans uh, perhaps are limited in, as you said, in. Uh, analyzing multidimensional data, but are capable of common sense and knowledge of abstraction of creativity. And this, this cannot be, be realized by, by using machines, okay? Yes, okay, I understand. So it's very glad, it's, uh, I'm very happy like you bring up Turing test. It's actually one of the questions I would like to, would like to ask, but uh, I think it's intended like Turing bring out the, the Turing test to use human intelligence as the reference, right? Is the, but do you yes. think, but in your, in your proposed like alternative test, do you think um, there's a golden reference to the intelligence? Should a human intelligence to be the golden reference or like, like because for human intelligence, we've got IQ test, like we've got marks, we've got yes, something. Yes, yes. Would you like to, would you think there's going to be something similar? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's very hard because you, you see human intelligence is uh, a combination of, 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 of skills yes. and depending also on, on, on the persons, the weight of each combination, the importance of this combination is, is different. For instance, you can be a, a gifted uh, football player and mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. too bad in mathematics. So you cannot yeah. say this is, uh, this is the benchmark for human exactly. intelligence. Of course, uh, the human intelligence has some characteristics that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, we can talk about human consciousness and things like that, okay? But but uh, I mean, uh, whatever definition, precise definition you give, uh, this will be debatable, of course. From the from the uh, chip design or like um, the silicon uh, industrial, like um, uh, we also talk about like human brain, like for example, is a very powerful computing machine. Like we can perform like much better performance in in comparison to very powerful human built machines. But at a cost of just uh, like maybe a burger or something. Like you don't need to cost like a lots of power to 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 boot uh, or to power the, your 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 brain. That's the fundamental difference between. Yes, human but I, I think also, and this is something I explain in detail in the book uh, that uh, studying the brain. Uh, will not be enough to understand human intelligence. Yes. Why? Yes, because uh, human intelligence, in fact, is uh, it's like our computer. Our computer uh, consists of hardware, but also software plays play, plays a very very important role. Yes. yes. And uh, for human intelligence, uh, uh, mental phenomena uh, are, are are very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, here there is a huge debate, of course, because uh, some people claim that the mental phenomena uh, do not exist, I mean, or do not play any role. So people mm -hmm. try to understand human intelligence by studying only the brain, okay? Because mm -hmm. the brain is just a real thing, okay? Mm -hmm. But I have an objection to that. Uh, I don't care. I, don't, I will not argue whether uh, mental phenomena are real or not. I mean, yeah. this is this is a completely useless discussion. But uh, what I say in my lectures is that if I ask you to explain how your laptop behaves and mm -hmm. I give you access to all the circuits, okay, can you uh, infer which function it computes because once you compile the software, everything everything is electrical signals, okay? Yes. Like, yes. like in the brain. But yes. it's very hard to understand what your laptop does. And it will be very, very hard to penetrate, uh, to uh, uh, to deepen into uh, human intelligence without uh, studying the relationship between mental phenomena and, and the phenomena computation yes. in, in the brain. And I think that's, uh, and also you mentioned about like another cycle or like a bigger cycle of uh, consciousness versus intelligence is like, although we talk about individual intelligence, but a human do not live in individually, right? They, be, they live in the, in the society, live in social lives. So, so the, the behaviors of the people around you may affect your behaviors as well. Like sometimes we see like very interesting behaviors, like 
although we know this is very risky and we know that it's not going to be have good results. Uh, it depends on how to define good, but uh, the people still doing it, that they still need to take risk and still need to do it because of the like the social lives and stuff. Yes, but also also language. Language is a result of, of interaction between okay. humans. I mean, if a human lived uh, isolated in the natural, he probably, I mean, no need to develop language. And mm. you know that the, the emergence of language is a, was a key factor for the development of, of human intelligence. So mm. you see, he, he, human intelligence is, is uh, the product of social evolution of humans. Mm.